All right. Uh, hello there. I guess uh, I'll, I'll st I'm going to start the video after I clean. I'll come back to this. I uh, just did the flow test. Uh, I was a little bit scared. This particular one, whatever flow, uh, da, 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 da. whatever flow, aqua flow, this particular aqua flow uh, does not have a really good uh, design uh, here at the neck. On rigid forums online, uh, where they're talking about corrugated steel, they recommend a brand named Rhino for stainless steel corrugated. I'll look into Rhino uh, stainless steel corrugated another time. Right now I wanted whatever was available from my local suppliers. This is from Darsco. I did find this name uh, for sale uh, through all the major uh, hardware supplies uh, if you ship it to your house and if you're willing to wait uh, six days. And uh, I didn't want to wait six days and I got lucky this price was less than half of what I had seen online uh, just because it was covered in dust and uh, here's the uh, label just so you can see it Oops. so aquaflow water heater uh, connector flexible and kink free it did flex uh, I've shook on it uh, after connecting it up to make sure there are no leaks uh, because this is 18, ouch. This is 18 right here. This is also 18. Uh, it looked like this was actually going to be the more difficult one because uh, of the tightness of the bend. Uh, but that went fine. And then this one, um, I don't feel comfortable ever bending uh, near the attachment or the head or the fixture or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but never really want to bend near these things. And they also already looked a little bit liquid. Uh, but there are no drips. It's fully pressurized and has run a flow test. Uh, but whatever this uh, liquid is, this is the oil I put on it before I tightened it down. This is the uh, flaxseed oil. This liquid that you can see is the flaxseed oil I had on it when the head was floating free. But that's also a good clue about what I'm working with. Uh, this fitting is probably a flare fitting uh, with corrugated metal. And the flare fitting doesn't seem to join to anything solid. That's part of the reason I got such a good price on it. Hopefully this is an older version. That's part of the reason I got like the amazing $6.66 price on it. Uh, but right now it passed the flow test. It can take a little bit of abuse. I'm not allowed to break anything or cause it to leak. But like if, if someone hits on it or pushes on it or something or bumps it, I need to make sure it doesn't suddenly spring a leak. And there's nothing going on around here. Uh, I did this and uh, tightened it down, and it seemed to seal fine. The, the reason for the hesitance and the criticizing it is the flare fittings, you always want the flare fitting to meet against another piece of metal. And this isn't a metal to metal flare fitting, this is a corrugated pipe uh, with a flare. It has a nut to the flare, but then the flare uh, is pressed against a black rubber gasket that presses against the metal. And so that metal flare is twisting against that rubber, which is tree sap, uh, is the gasket between the metal bell flare and the uh, nozzle on the, uh, this is the out one, this is the end one. But on the uh, exiting flow, uh, I don't have a rigid, they call it a union fitting. It's not a union fitting where it's metal to metal uh, being trapped by a nut. And bell flares should always be metal to metal. Though metal to metal uh, for amateurs in, in brake lines and all uh, tends to leak. Uh, a lot of people experience that because they don't make their bell fittings correct. And they don't uh, ream or do over the prep work. Or more often than not, the... Uh, Brake lines have a coating on the outside of it, like a shopping bag. They call armor, a poly, <coughs> polypropylene armor. And um, if you don't clean that properly, then the stuff like the blue gunk here, uh, that I was talking about in an earlier video, the blue gunk uh, would get in there and it would create a gap and the metal to metal wouldn't have a good union fitting. So my complaint here is uh, that 
this corrugated is twisting against the rubber plastic which is against this and if I bend it which it is bent right now you can see that uh, I was afraid that it was going to damage the rubber gasket and cause a leak here and this is currently fully pressurized everything's up and running but I haven't connected electricity this is hot water but it was what was left in the tank and um, seems to be holding up fine as I said Aquaflow is a recognized brand that uh, the major uh, carriers uh, list on their websites but um, my braided one my braided one you see this oh uh, the this is PEX P-E-X in stainless steel braided it comes into this crimped fitting and uh, I would really prefer uh, that there be some sort of hard fitting or crimped fitting uh, if they're doing a union fitting. Uh, this is what brake lines do, so not the end of the world, but brake lines also don't bend immediately uh, at the union joint that you uh, join to the other one. And uh, I mean, th this belt is like immediately right here where the union fittings would join way out here inside the bell housing and be pressed together and straight for more than half the nut. Uh, this is only straight right here at the top edge, or that's where the flare is, is at the top edge of the nut. So that, that's, that's a strange experience uh, for anxiety. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so that's all I was sharing. I uh, also recommend against the shark bite, uh, but that's my opinion. Uh, using it inside in the house, uh, the shark bite... Uh, it's something you can twist on, and it doesn't leak when you twist on it, but I don't really want any of my fittings being twistable and slip and slide. So, you know, Shark Bite for speed, a lot of people are adopting it. It seems to own the uh, water heater market. It was bizarre uh, on Home Depot's website. I've seen Shark Bite like everywhere and on Lowe's. It's like, what's going on with people wanting to put the Shark Bite on the water heaters? It's a hot water supply. Why would they do that? A little bit of air there just then. Uh, anyways, someone uh, struck these things and damaged them. Uh, and so uh, I had a leak because one of these had been struck and uh, bled from around the uh, crimping. Uh, this is Watts brand, W-A-T-T-S, stainless steel, uh, BKF-18 means 18 inches BK I do not know black BF I don't know best for <laughs> I don't know uh, stainless steel S220 it's probably more important whatever now, this is Watts I don't like it uh, rigid I complained about it uh, my thanks to whoever used uh, pipe thread compound. It came on and off easily. Uh, Teflon is usually good enough, but there's something about Teflon that just, I don't know, I'm more confident it feels like it's easier to join and unjoin uh, with the liquid compound. Uh, the uh, Teflon or PTFE, I don't know why people say Teflon. Uh, maybe that is what Teflon is, but the PTFE uh, can bind and uh, have difficulties uh, that require more force to join and unjoin. So using the PTFE and then some sort of liquid compound seems to be fine. Uh, some lubrication. Uh, this is PVC. I really <laughs> don't want to twist too hard on PVC no matter where it's mounted. Might shatter it or something. Pipe wrench. And anyways, that's, that's it for now. Um, this is holding up fine for the pressure test. Normally a pressure test, as you know, is more than 24 hours. Normally you'd let it sit for 24 hours before you do anything, but I gotta get the uh, shower head on the shower and get cleaned up. I also gotta clean this. This will take just a moment. I'll get a bucket and some water and wipe it down and then dry it off. You know, I don't wanna have this be wet and uh, connect up that. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh shit alright I am not changing the shower head tonight because I have to go out front uh, and disconnect it from the main street because uh, even though I can turn off the hot water 
uh, the cold water shutoff is outside. There really should be a cold water shutoff somewhere inside the house. Uh, so I'll change the shower head tomorrow. Uh, talk to you later. Uh, cleaning this up and uh, drying it off and then uh, turning on the electricity. Uh, but it seems fine and uh, should be fine for the next 24 hours or so. I'm shaking on it, giving it stress, and there's nothing coming out of it, no bubbles or anything. And the only thing that was on it that was kind of like, oh, is that bad or whatever, that's before I tightened it down. Uh, the uh, carbon hydrogen chains leaked through the open union joint uh, behind the neck. The metal to metal is a union joint. This isn't a union joint because of the rubber uh, tree sap uh, gasket. And yet the tree sap gaskets, I think, should always be treated with uh, some sort of carbon hydrogen. People call it uh, hydrogen carbons or hydrocarbons. People call it petrol and all that. They say don't do put petrol on these, but my experience, you're always better off putting the petroleum jelly on the plumbing. Maybe it's some sort of hetero um, rainbow. I don't want to say rainbow. I love I love colors. W women should wear colors. Everybody should enjoy uh, wearing more than one color. A tie should have some character to it. It's weird that people are like, I I'm even myself, like four suits at most, uh, usually two suits. You might have a blue one and a black one. I prefer pinstripes, vertical pinstripes. Anyways, uh, I, I got to ask some plumbers. Uh, I'll search online, I guess, too. Why the hell do people recommend against using petroleum jelly on the gaskets? Uh, I think it's a sexual innuendo because my experience of repairing uh, shower fixtures and flow control valves and all that is that rubber gasket gets worn out or dries out or flexes out from people doing this or not, you know, like back and forth, people doing this, twisting back and forth on it. The gasket uh, loses its uh, youthfulness, like EVA soles and uh, running shoes. The uh, springiness wears out. And so if it's under any working pressure, you definitely want to put the petroleum jelly on it. If plumbers uh, say don't put the petroleum jelly, it's because they want to make it possible for you to break or damage the joints. I didn't use petroleum jelly. I did use flaxseed oil because you always use oil, and I learned that from doing the uh, oil filter on cars. You always rub oil around the edge of the oil filter, otherwise uh, it might be damaged or bind or some other issue uh, when you seal it to the body frame or seal it to the gasket frame. Uh, so you always coat it with something. And I recommend petroleum jelly, but I don't have any petroleum jelly in my house. I just have an assortment of cooking oils. I have walnut oil also. Uh, I would recommend also using whichever oil has the highest burn temperature, which would be uh, grapeseed oil, to my knowledge, of the liquid oils. Uh, coconut is also a good recommendation. I don't have any coconut, and I wouldn't use coconut because it's actually the least healthy of all things. It's also solid at room temperature. None of your oils should be solid at room temperature. Uh, only... Uh, liquid at room temperature is good for eating. If it's solid at room temperature, like palm oil and peanut butter and coconut oil, those should not be in your food products. Those are fuels and used for other things and not meant to be ingested. No carbon hydrogen that is solid at room temperature should be eaten. No petrocarbon should be eaten if it's solid at room temperature. No hydrocarbon should be eaten if it's solid at room temperature. And, uh... Anyways, that's that. Clean this up. Connect that up. Hot shower.